Hello and welcome to the Hello. catch up for the Guardians of the Galaxy stream. Oh boy. We're going to start uh, a little stranger than usual with uh, a comment I spotted on the unlisted version that um, oh, okay. has got some counter arguments to uh, what we were talking about and I was, I was curious All to right. cover them. Okay. Um, it got a chunk of upvotes, so you know. I'm just uh, curious to see what, what do you guys think. I'll uh, I'll read it out piece by piece. All right, we'll start with the overall point, which is, I strongly disagree with that the ending has a very positive vibe. It's certainly more positive than I expected, but I see it as pretty neutral, leaning to negative. That is surprising. I mean, before getting into references, I would just say, oh. I didn't even entertain the idea that it was even close to, in any way, negative. I thought the idea, no. the broad idea, was that they all finally get to pursue sort of the things that they know, truly man. means a lot to them. The film ending on everybody dancing and smiling gave me the impression that this was a happy ending. It's not even just... Well, you know what, we'll do it one by one, right? So the first point is, from this person, Peter meets his dying grandpa, so that's bittersweet. Um, I mean, I think... I mean, it's just happy, could... it's just sweet. There's no bittersweet there. He's not even it's a just, dying grandpa. It's, it's just, not like Interstellar where he meets the, the daughter of the night before she dies. It's that his grandpa well, but, is old, but he's meeting him. It's strictly sweet. Yeah, like, the, the only way that I could imagine, like, I could imagine a scenario where it's bittersweet to, like, meet a dying relative after having missed many years with them, but, like, that was not the vibe that you get. Well, you would have been in hospital. In be on a hospital bed. Yeah, you figure that they'd, they'd emphasize like, a level of, you know, him sort of, like, being pretty close to the end. But, like, I don't know, he just looks like he's living, you well, know... Well, the, the, the after credit house. scene shows them just living life. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what was kind of... I think that has to be taken um, into consideration. It's like, yeah, it's Peter getting to hang out with his grandpa, you know? They're, e they're eating Cheerios together in the morning, and he's reading the newspaper, and it's supposed to be like, yep, this is normal life that he's got. Like, I'm about mowing the I don't get the impression at all that we're meant to be like, oh, damn, man, Peter, you missed out on so much. The impression I got is finally, like, you know, yeah. Peter made the right to, choice. You know, reunite with his, his gramps. So, yeah, uh, I don't agree that it's bittersweet. Just, just to pause you on that one. Gamora is softening, but as a result, does not belong anywhere. Uh, no, the, she is very happy what? with the Ravagers, so, clearly. I would say that they are very wrong in their assessment, and it's unfortunate because it would be a probably more viable ending to have her not knowing what to do next, but clearly, she says it throughout the film, and they show us, she is happy the with the, the Ravagers, yeah, very at the happy. End, she's partying with them, they're hugging her, remember the, the portal naga was there, the floating robot head, she all the other guys, content. they were hugging. She's and very she, content with that's where her, she is. She refers family. to them as her people. Yep. Like, yeah, she's a Ravager through and through. Like, we they think that her, that's. She loves them. And of bullshit, course, we but, don't think you know. that that's congruent, but, like, the film definitely thinks that she's, like, The film is chill. not confused about what its position My is. My guess so would be I James Gunn that. would say uh, she is happy with them. And well, that, that's that might be a, an interesting question is what do we think James Gunn says? Like, yeah, man, that was a pretty negative ending. Do we think that he says, yeah, that's what I was going for? No. Do we think that's what he would say? <laughs> <laughs> like really There's too much dancing and happy music and That's smiling exactly, yeah for me to think it's sad i don't know man seeing nebula smile for like the first time ever i definitely didn't get the impression i was meant to be sad or otherwise negative about funny you that. say that the next one is nebula's taking a role she never wanted because she has to I know she is. She she's happy. She wants to do she's that. She's not gone she anywhere. To do she that. chose she to do that. She wanted to do that. She chose it. This, yeah, that, that's just a complete misread, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Uh, there's there's a line about how all of these children are finally they're going to have lives that are like not shit. The, the the kind of life that she had, and that she can be the one who makes that happen. Yeah. She so I I would argue she's actually very happy to give all of these children a better life. I think the fact that we got to see her smile for the first time, like to me, that was I I figured that people would read that because that's how I read it. Because you know I still like Nebula. As like mm -hmm. uh, as yeah. a oh wow she like, finally yeah, is like funny. happy she's actually smiling we never see her smile ever so like to see her smile is really that's really cool as a payoff I certainly yeah. didn't get the impression that I was meant to look at that and go oh no Nebula's smiling <laughs> like yeah all three like, that we've done so far <laughs> I'd say they're all strictly positive now yep. is a Mantis couches it diplomatically but certainly seems to have soured on the Guardians and the role she plays with them so. The problem is that, like, this just comes out of nowhere. 
Like, yeah, if someone that... would say, is it a positive ending for Mantis? It's like, well, it's not an anything for Mantis. It doesn't even make sense for Mantis. So I can't really say not. what is going on here, but it's definitely portrayed as like a, I'm off on an adventure. More focused on herself than she is against anything else. Remember, it's she, meant she, to she be like, like oh, signals... I'm so glad that I was with you guys, but I'm walking my own path now, you know? Yeah, and she signals the creatures, and it's like, here I go off on my own. This is going to be... my own adventures, yeah. Yeah. I don't believe for the a second that that scene is a bad ending. When she says, I've only ever done what the Guardians want me to do, it's like, um, no, you wanted to be part of this team, and you got to make a lot of choices, uh, That's, on your own. Yeah, like, you, I really you don't were the like one the who went to Earth. You went to Earth to do the Kevin Bacon Christmas thing. That was something that you wanted to do, that you set up. Yeah. And you did it, and you didn't care, like, whether or not Peter was going to approve of it or anything, you just wanted to do it. And like, she's... the idea that she's never had the capacity to make any choices with this team is just, I don't know where that came from. She's also, like, fucking with team members. Oh. Uh, there's that. Oh yeah, yeah, by that point, fuck her. But you know, it's very clear what the uh Yeah, she um, wants to do her own thing. Yeah, uh the most I would sell on that one is neutral, but that's just because of the floopy writing. Like no one knows what Not the fuck's going on. That's what, I don't think that James Gunn would again to appeal to this vague what would James Gunn say? I don't think he'd say, Yeah, that was meant to be negative, you know, she has like no sense of identity or place mm -hmm. and she has to go discover that because the Guardians can't give it to her. They actually robbed her of a lot of years of her life. I don't think that he would say something like that. I could be wrong. Um, Rocket becomes the leader of the Guardians, but he lost his second adoptive family. No, he can go and probably visit him whenever he wants. That's I, the thing. Yeah, he so, can definitely I, yeah. go visit Nebulas and nowhere. Nebula, Drax, uh, and Star Lord are all easily visitable. Yeah. Yeah, and of like course, Earth is not is, gone. There is the whole that he's like he's embraced his identity for the first time in his life when he's been utterly resistant to the notion of ever doing so and like comfortable with opening up with people like rocket has a very i would say that rocket like rocket's got some level of peace here um like that's yeah, like, what he's why would, to get why was he so uh standoffish is because he never wants to be in a position where he has to experience the pain of losing his family ever again but the point you know where he the end of the story oh, is no. He he he's that's the place he belongs. That's what he's the best at. That's what his purpose the is final, to guide a family. I don't know what to say, man. The final frame of the movie is Rocket spinning around, dancing, and like screaming with joy, like absolutely overjoyed and thrilled. It's not negative, even remotely. It's absolutely <laughs> not negative. I don't know how anybody could possibly say that that's negative. I'm not sure how you could be like, yeah, I'm so glad with the story that we got for Rocket, and then also say. But, I mean, that was a pretty negative ending. I don't know, man. The thing that I like about it for him is that it is so positive, even yeah, though, you know... I'm glad he made it out. Like, thank God we got something out of this movie. I mean, he is he is the character <laughs> that is the strongest portion of this film, I will say. And like, last, without a doubt. not least, okay. uh, Drax. Although probably the most positive, is still without his friends and is left working with the Guardians member he got along with worst. The side characters get fairly happy endings, but I don't think the main characters do. Drax! He's, he gets to be with dances. Groot. Dr Drax, like, he's dance something, so again, because I with I do I do like these films or at least I like the, the other ones um, Drax has, has, like, made reference to the fact that, like, his people don't dance, they don't dance, he, he doesn't really dance. He said he, dancing that's, is that's for like, idiots, he said that in the movie. Well, wait, yeah. and, and it, I could have sworn he yeah. said, it's not that his people don't dance it's that the love of his life didn't dance Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but the, I, I'm pretty sure the I, idea was that he doesn't dance either, and that's why he was in love yeah, with Yeah, he said the movie only, like, idiots And danced. the fact that he is actually breaking out into dance because, like, he's, you know, so happy and thrilled with where he's at. How is that not, like, unrelentingly He gets to be positive? a father to loads of children. That's, of course, that's yeah. an yeah. obvious, that, that like... He doesn't... He didn't have, that he lost. What do you think James is trying to do? Is like, his whole thing was revenge for the killing of his family, and now he gets this huge family. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like, I'm not even, I don't know if I would describe this as, like, Pope. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know what I would call this. It's just, uh, this uh, read of the film. So, yeah, saying that, like, the, the side characters get fairly happy endings, but the main ones don't. I, no, I don't even know what that on. means. Is Peter no and way. Rocket the main ones? Or, or, well, yeah, or is he talking about, like, Kraglin or something? <laughs> like, I don't know. Or, uh, Cosmo. Yeah, because they had happy endings too. I I feel like Absolutely. everyone got a happy ending of all the hero characters. It's, it's yeah, and our problem is not that they got happy endings. It's how we got to those endings. Exactly, and I never expected this film to have such an overwhelmingly positive ending. No, I especially when you either. had reviewers saying like, "Oh, it's you know, it was like so dour." Yeah, I think when we we heard that, it was like they were saying it as a negative. We're like, "Yes, drama," <laughs> you know, tragedy. 
Um, but I mm. mean, the other the thing storyline they wanted to talk about was the uh, we were wrong on the Adam Warlock arrow tone thing, right? And they said it okay. pretty unambiguously works for four reasons. Now, before I read out these reasons, I want to I want to say that what they're arguing oh, for no. is that it is not tonal whiplash, okay, as a joke. So reason one, it is humorous. Oh, um, so I mean, you're that, just stating the thing that, that we're talking about. Yeah, that doesn't that's, actually have anything to do with what we're talking about, <laughs> whether or not it's yeah. funny. We we said this we in the discussion. We agree that it's humorous. Like, that's the point, is that it's humorous. Well, I think I anything, said at one point, I didn't... Um, Movie Cynic and I both agreed that we didn't find it funny, but that's not what I'm talking about. Whether or not I find it funny is not the problem. doesn't mean it wasn't a joke either. Like, whether or not you found it funny, it's like, therefore, you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's obviously an yeah, attempt at humor. Yeah, the point was, yeah, the point is very clearly humor. The, the primary issue I had was placement, not whether or not it's funny. Um, some of the jokes that we were happy with, because it's difficult to talk about whether or not something's funny, right? If you go beyond, I laughed or didn't. But saying yeah. it is funny is point one is kind of funny. <laughs> it's like, that all is right. a little funny. That's not really how arguments work. Number two, it further establishes Warlock's near invincibility. Um, so I got that when he flew through space and was fucking up all the Guardians before then. And that I think that's established with how he survives yeah. a stab through the, through the heart as well. There's another thing Movie Cynic said. Um, yeah, I know well, he's strong. I got yeah, it. I got it. Number three, it is an early indicator of his stupidity and aloofness. Uh, you can do that in many, many, many ways. You could all, I don't even know that. Is it? For him to say who threw that? He didn't in, see who threw it. Maybe. Yeah, he wants to know who's fucking with him. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that that's that says anything about his intelligence. Well, then he didn't see somebody throw something at him when he only has two eyes. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, so I don't buy that. Number four, it's an early indicator that it was Rocket specifically that he was after, rather than the Guardians overall. That's not true. If anything, what we learn is that why would you be after Rocket if this is what like all the things that you're doing? It's kind the of bizarre. Indication is that he would have fucked up the person who threw that at him. He just didn't know who it was. If he saw, I mean, he he messed with everybody who like he went after everybody who attacked him. Yeah, like Nebula shot at him and then he went after her. He didn't say to her, yeah, "Where's like Rocket he, Raccoon? I want him." Yeah, like he went straight after her. And then Groot attacked him, and he attacked Groot back, and then he started heading into my. I didn't realize he was after Rocket. Not at this point, I wasn't, it wasn't... Yeah, because how would you ever rocket. reach that conclusion? You would, if you reach that conclusion, you guessed, and you got lucky. I mean, That's, like, that's why on. when Nebula said they must have sent him to go after Rocket, it's like, that's, you can't actually that's conclude that from the scene. Lead. Yeah, that's a huge You could have said threat. he was going after Groot, or going after Nebula, he, just as much as Rocket. He attacked all of them. Or everybody. Yeah, everybody. Just because he attacked Rocket first... That or that he attacked he Rocket, Rocket in the most terrible. significant way. Like, that doesn't change... Well, yeah. technically he didn't, because he ripped Groot's head off. So. Uh, and, of course, what he did to Nebula. If she wasn't Nebula, like, goddamn, that would have been the end of her. Yeah. So, uh, not convinced by any of those reasons, I'm afraid. Nope. Um, I don't even think they have much to do with the complaint, which was tone. Uh, well, yeah, that... I, I, I guess the conversation kind of went in a few different directions at times. Uh... But it was mainly about tone, at least yeah, as I not, understood it. I wasn't really talking about, like, utility of it. I was just, uh... Well, we mainly... did talk about the utility of it to, like, as part of the conversation, anyway. Well, it's not what I was uh, concerned with, anyway. The yeah, one yeah, thing sure. is that wouldn't change anything for me. It's more so about, um... I'm confused as to how I'm supposed to feel. So any, any utility it has in terms of plot doesn't really change that for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I know that our Guardian's take is going to be possibly the most controversial one on the internet at this point. I doubt anyone had more criticism of it than we did, um, especially to that Probably degree. Probably not. Probably but, not. They'll come around. I think with this one, they will absolutely come around. Uh, I think that the rocket scenes are going to overshadow any and all flaws people would see in the film. And it's only going to be a matter of time before you realize like uh, those rocket scenes really don't account for uh, much of the film. Oh, it's just when you watch the film again, and you're like, man, I love those rocket scenes, and then you realize that a huge portion of the movie is, like, a lot of dumb stuff happening. Like that, like that prison, uh, not pr the, what's the, f the facility, the, the, uh... The, the orgoscope? Yeah, like that, I don't know how many people are gonna go back through that sequence and be like, man, this is like the shit I'm here for, you know, <laughs> when they're watching yeah. the film. And, it, and then it's like, 
oh, well, that's not what I'm here for. How much of the film is what I'm here for, which is the rocket stuff? It's like, in terms of runtime, like, it's it's actually surprisingly little, considering that it is the focus of the film in a lot of ways. Very um, effective, uh, but, in, in, <clears throat> in, you know, dense in terms of its, you know, payoff and, you know, emotion, but it is not, uh, yeah, it's not a big chunk of the film at all. Which well, is fine. So I just you said that, 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 uh, that comment got a lot of upvotes. Yeah, it, was, uh, it seemed uh, unusual. It was at least like 11, which is pretty strong for a oh, yeah, unlisted. Okay. Right. Oh, wow. um, 11 people. Oh, shame on you. <laughs> well, well, I just, I guess I don't understand like how you could even remotely come away with the interpretation that that was like a, a neutral to negative ending. Like that's mind blowing. That's the thing. Me. I hadn't even heard uh, that point of view before. So um, it was actually negative. Yeah, which is an interesting idea, but I don't. Um, I'm not convinced. I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, no. Right then. On with the super chats. All Does right. it make sense for the antagonists to ruin the king's reputation before trying to kill him? The the king's. I, I have no idea what this is referring to. I have legitimately no. Are we are we talking about like metaphorically the king or something like that? Maybe, yeah, it's like a general story, writing but, uh, question. Would it make sense for antagonists to ruin the king's reputation before trying to kill him? I would say it's going to depend. Uh, maybe it depends on the goal. Uh, if it's about, like, guardians, I don't know who you're referring to when you say king. All right, then. Yeah, no clue. Dave Filoni has this mindset that the main character has to almost lose, otherwise the story will be boring. Um, um, I mean, if we're talking about tension in the sense of almost losing, meaning that the fights they get in aren't total, you know, just total slaughter fests, then like, I get what he's saying. You don't, it's, you don't have to have tension that way, but it's a way to get tension is to have a character nearly die in an encounter or to have a rough time of their fights, but ultimately prevail. It's, um, <clears throat> uh, if you had like Avengers 2012, the portal opens and then... Iron Man and the Thor just fire all this shit into the hole and nothing gets through until the nuke comes in and then they tell the government to guide it into the hole and they do and it blows up and everything's fine. You're like, huh. Well, I guess that worked out. And so you'd say like, oh, is the problem then that we need to have a point where the heroes are losing? And it's like, kinda. It would be more interesting if that was happening, if things were harder. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, I wouldn't want to base anything... Definitively on that, for example, Mando has done that in each of the season finales, and it's terrible because they'll give them absolutely overwhelming odds, and then something insane will happen to make them win. I think it's just not handling it with very much uh, talent. Come on, Cap, we're with you. That's, that's uh, fair. I saw some messages saying that Cap was like the, the hero of the Guardians movie. I think he did very well defending uh, many portions. I'm not sure that he came out so happy with the film by the end. No, I don't think so. I can't wait for EFAP to tell me my opinion about this movie. Yeah. Well, hey, if you find I'm the references yourself, compelling, but... then... We want to convince you, yeah. Uh, wanted to get this thought out on the whole first game to give older person who hasn't played games, and Pac-Man comes to mind. Don't think any of you guys brought that up, uh, that one up. That seems Maybe like it would work. Maybe there's probably a bunch that we, uh, yeah, there's probably a bunch. It, for, for a lot and of people, a lot it probably of games. was Space the Vegas, first game that a lot of people Galaga. played. There's a lot of games that you could point to. Well, it's just that format we were trying to satisfy where we were saying, like, we need to get them in a position where they, even they recognize their skill is what's preventing them from progressing. Instead of yeah, their knowledge exactly. on which part to put in which place to create the pickaxe to then take it with. Like, you could tell Ben was just bored. But when you give him something really straightforward, like, you control this thing, and you just have to move it away from the danger, then it's about reaction time at that point, right? Yeah. Like, have established rules and parameters and ultimately a goal. This is what your goal is. It's to get this ball in this hoop, and this is the rules. Something like that. Um, I give Guardians of the Galaxy 3 a 4 out of 10, and I will stand on the hill of it being the best film in Phase 5. <laughs> a fair thing to say. This yep. is the best film of Phase 5, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rags. Hello. Thanks to the cast for all the entertainment to help me settle into my new house. Oh. Oh, you're welcome very much. Hope it's going well. 
Um, a plot contrivance that creates conflict is fine. A plot contrivance that resolves a conflict is an issue. Any thoughts on that logic? Uh, when it creates it, it kind of depends, I think. Uh, yeah, we've talked about yeah. this before. Yeah, conflict can be, can be annoying. Well, take, for example, we have mutants all over the world or something, and the story is about one that um, had cancer at the same time, and it created, like, super cancer, and then someone says, uh, isn't that a bit of a coincidence, a mutant that has cancer? And it's like, well, it's, like, statistically speaking, that's probably going to happen at some point. And so you change the point of view on it from... It happens to be this guy, to more so we're looking at the guy it happened to happen to, which is going yeah, to happen. Yeah, kind of like, uh, the sort of inciting incidents can often be said to be like, you know, what a coincidence that this happened, but it's, it's, it's like, the reason why we're following this person is because they were the person who that incident happened to, right? And then we want to see where it goes from there. Meanwhile, it seems like lottery... a general... In, uh... Yeah, the lottery is a good example of how that works. The, well, but, yeah, uh, a lottery will win have it. a winner. A lottery yeah. will have a winner. That's not a contrivance. Someone winning the lottery exactly when they need it, and we've been following them the whole time, and it resolves all their problems. That's a contrivance. If we had, uh, you know, the next Spider-Man movie in in the university, someone has been separately working on technology that has nothing to do with anything developed before, and it turns them into a giant mechanical monster that's going to try and kill the whole world. It's just like wow. And Spider-Man happens to go to this university. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like, <laughs> sure. Uh, so yeah, I don't believe that um, to create complex contrivances is just fine. Like in that case, for example, it's like, well, how do we justify? It? It's like, okay, make them a student that's been studying Wakandan as Guardian and all these different texts that have been coming out, and then he makes a combination that a couple of them hadn't thought of because he's. I'm trying to think of how you can build it off other things that have already been established, basically, and then make it feel like it's actually happening. Like it's actually happening here. For a good reason. Um, you could even have it happen at a different part of the world, but that he comes to where Spider-Man is for some other unrelated reason. Maybe because... Uh, fucking hell, everything happens in New York, so... <laughs> <laughs> the New York's a happening place. Everything happens in New York, yeah. If you if you live in the MCU, do not buy an apartment in New York. Not just because you probably shouldn't anyway, but in the MCU, there's probably like aliens and shit and extra-dimensional invasionary forces. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's always going to be uh, ways you can better write it than simply, that's just the way it's happening. There was a lot of, that's just the way it's happening in Guardians th uh, 3. Yep. I watched that Grace Randolph EFAP while stoned. I'm still not convinced it wasn't a fever dream. Yeah, she's, yeah. Uh, she's something else. Something it's else. wild, yeah. She's, uh, she's like no other. She's wild. Look up the cosmic caterpillar. Nature is pretty pretty. Uh, Cosmic Caterpillar. I've not heard of this before, but I assume... Oh, wow, that's a that's a, an odd-looking one. I assume it looks pretty. Oh! Yeah, that's... I could see why it got its name. Man, uh, is that... How did it develop that way? What was the... Uh, what is it? Yeah, I wonder what it's mimicking, or... or... So it looks like there's two eyes on it. Do the eyes make it look like it looks like two eyeballs? Does it look like a um cosmic caterpillar? Well, cool. it's not it doesn't look like it's called cosmic caterpillar. Uh this is from a Reddit post. Um Yeah, I don't know what actual species this is, or if this picture I'm looking at is fabricated. Um, cosmic caterpillar of the Pacific Pacific fruit piercing moth. The Pacific fruit piercing moth. This is the caterpillar of that. Um, yeah, I, I, it's a while some caterpillars appear like snakes to the predators, cosmic palicus creams eat. Duh, duh, duh. I am curious to know what they are attempting to mimic. Apparently they're supposed to mimic, like, leaves or something? Which I don't see, but maybe animals that would otherwise eat it think that it's kind of leaf-looking. Maybe. I wish James didn't blast his playlist anytime he wants to change the tone of the scene. Um, I did feel like the music wasn't as well handled in this one compared to, uh... It wasn't as good. Number one. Nah. 
Uh, not at all to do with the choice of songs, more so to do with how they were implemented, that's all. Um, I guess there will now be straight fairy prawn of Rocket. Never seen art with him with a girl. Hi, Rags. Hello. Thanks for letting us know. Maybe. It's very possible. Who knows? I guess we'll never find out. Originally, this was the start of phase four. Wait, what? Was was Guardians? I don't know that we ever knew where it was. I think uh, I don't think it was part of the slate because um, that was okay. like around the time that he had gotten like fired. Right. This and it, he's saying this was supposed to be the first of Phase Four. I don't think that. I'm pretty sure Black Widow was always like that was the plan anyway. Or maybe That's like a, a, what what I'm what I'm getting at is that. I don't recall any time ever where we got, like, a big official slate that was, like, revealed to the public, where Guardians 3 was, like, there. Um, Maybe that was, like, super <clears throat> duper originally early uh, plan. Originally, this was the start of Phase 4 until Gun was fired. Since this is his final film story meant for spin-off shows and movies were crammed into this. Uh, maybe. As in, like, there's a lot of things that happen in this that facilitate... People, because Mantis randomly doing that will maybe make a lot more sense once we find out where she ends up next. Right. Well, make more sense in terms of you know, like <laughs> from a. Yeah, from a he was sense, a yeah. scroll all along. Ooh. Wow. Ah. I mean, Secret Invasion is uh, that's that's the next one, right? Yeah. So. Uh, hail, Fappers! Just want to thank you for your excellent videos and the BTS work on them. Oh, behind the scenes, I guess. Uh, they're a joy to watch. Much love to you all. Also, hi, Rags. Oh, hello. And I'm glad you enjoy the stuff that, uh, you know, gets put out. Yeah, collecting those notes took a while. <laughs> but it made for a very long and deep dive into a movie that, uh, I mean, I, I, we kind of knew that was going to happen after we'd seen it, I think. It was like, this is going to take a while. You always get that with uh, sci-fi films. There's so much technology and implications, especially one as part of a bigger world as the MCU. Yeah. Uh, at work, a cult of Jeb member came to work, and my coworker was incredibly confused. So after I explained it, and her question was, "What the fuck? Is it a meme or is it real?" Cult of Jeb member. First off, it's absolutely real. Mm hmm. Jeb. Jeb's a good guy. Jeb. Good person to worship. Studio Disney interference or gun disinterest. Um, Unfortunately, I think the reality is that Gunn really cared about this, and he put a lot of effort yeah. into it, and he likes all the choices. I think that's the case. Yep. Unfortunately. It's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it. <clears throat> also, Guardians of the Galaxy was not good, and Rocket was the worst part, and the oh, poor animals was a bit manipulative to try and get you to feel did not work for me. Oh, fuck oh, you. <laughs> I understand like that argument of oh, it was cute animals, therefore it's manipulative. As if they were children, it wouldn't so, mean like, this was brought if up they were kids. On open bar. If you remember, Free, do you remember what I said? Uh, and I'm curious I if you'd agree. Remember. I said there were a bunch of goblin people in those cages. Like gross goblin people, but they had all the same dialogue and situation. Uh, I'm the kind of person that would feel a shit ton of sympathy for them. Absolutely. Like if the course. gross, slimy goblin people go in, man, ain't it fun that we can name ourselves and we'll get out of here someday? That shit just gets to me. It doesn't matter if they look yep. cute. I, ju I just think it's 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 well made. It's like it's a well told story. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I I think <laughs> it sounds a little like overcompensating the whole like it's animals there. For I remember this. It's so crazy to think back to I Am Legend. Where people said they try and use the dog to manipulate you with feelings, and it's like, dude, that dog has a long like time in the film. He's very justified as to why you would have a dog, how useful the dog is, and then what happens to the dog makes a hell of a lot of sense in terms of um, choices that are made and stuff. And I'm just like, so people sometimes will just like sort of knee jerk reaction, being like, ah, oh, it's an animal. You're trying to manipulate me, or they're trying to convince what? you of a story that they're trying to tell, and it being exactly. more worthy of your emotions, you know. It's just sort of the the idea that it's not necessarily earnest when it absolutely can be. Yeah, I, th I think I'd rather just uh, point out. Remember, they did it with fucking Ragnarok. They were like, "Dog was manipulative." It's like the the difference between supporting it with writing and having it have consequences that match like how the characters feel and deal with it, versus just 
I have a dog. And then someone stabs it and you go, no, my dog. Or something like just that simple. So there's got to be a line we can draw. Hey, gents. What are the chances of an EFAP movies with the original Peter Pan, Hook, and Peter Pan and Wendy? That is, uh, that is definitely a real possibility. I would also want to throw in the 2003 Peter Pan movie. Because it's got what? Jason Isaacs playing what Hook in it. What? I don't even know this movie exists. Yeah, I didn't really... I've been made aware of it briefly sometimes, but now I'm like, ugh, full Peter Pans. Maybe we'll do two at a time. Be uh, a, yeah, because I would Pan like off. to see him. See I've also read compare. a Peter Pan book. I don't know if it's like canonical or what the, the Disney canon situation is, but there's a book I read as a kid called Peter and the Star Catchers. And uh, I rather liked it. I remember it having many short, uh, many small chapters, but I, I liked it. It was like a like a Peter Pan origin kind of story thing. Hmm. Uh, a space shilling credit unit for Star Lord. All right, thank you. Uh, the dog was my favorite character. I like Cosmo. Cosmo. Was, uh, yeah, I like Cosmo quite a bit. I like the accent and. Uh, you know, the little telekinesis powers in the suit. It, it's a, it's a fun little, you know, it's a fun little thing. Uh, they're retconning the time travel origin of the Beast Transformers in the new movie. Hooray! Also, the Dyer used his own toys for storyboarding. Oh, the director. Well. Oh, I've Transformers movie. I mean, um, whatever, if there's good news for Transformers fans, then good. I, I just, I'm yeah. very out of the loop on Transformers. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck's happening I think Transformers. Are kind of I'm so out of the loop. The, I think the reason why the new one is uh, a little more exciting to people is because it's, uh, like, trying to retain the original designs and stuff. Uh, which is probably, like, especially after all the, make the, these Michael, days. the Michael Bay Transformers movies kind of, like, gone with these really weird, incredibly complex, like, designs. I can't tell them apart, because they all look all, like, these these machine nightmares, and I just don't know who's who. Um, it, it seemed like that was partially, that was of the era, right, where it's like, well, you can't have them look like they do in the cartoons, because that's yeah, not Yeah, we're like, not children. Real. We're here to make money. They gotta look more real. But, I don't know, those designs, the original designs are cool, and they stuck for a reason. Are you guys excited for Dune Part 2? Uh, kind of. I mean, I'm gonna watch it, but, I, like, I'm not, like, super hyped or anything. Yeah, um, I was like, I, I will look forward to going to see that movie. I don't have much passion at all for Dune as an IP, but I'll definitely go watch it. Uh, in regards to movies being funny, it's almost like the juxtaposition of a bleak scenario and high stakes made the injection of levity appropriate. Uh, do you feel this way about, like, all of the Marvel movies? Juxtaposition of bleak scenario and high stakes makes the injection of levity appropriate. I don't so, think that's the Again, I would say, but... do we feel the same way about, like, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania when we have big world-ending consequences and we do a lot of stupid jokes? Yeah, I don't... I, I'm not sure I buy we the formula anyway. Way? Like, if someone said, uh, for example... Uh, gallows humor. It's like, that explains it. And just be like, that's not even, that doesn't mean just jokes when harsh things are happening. No, Very I don't specific. think so. I think that's, uh, yeah, it's a bit reductive. The um, idea that it becomes appropriate because the stakes are higher. Like, I don't even see the connection and the logic there. Yeah, like, this This is a conversation that comes up again and again and again and again, especially for Marvel movies. It's, uh, was it totally appropriate? And everyone's gonna have an opinion on it, and, uh, it's really hard, hard to nail it down. Turn is difficult. Yeah. Uh, just watched JP stream. I assume Jurassic Park. Curious if you knew that in the first Rex attack, the car that's flipped over is CG in several shots, including the first uh, wheel bite shot. It's done so well. I wondered if you noticed. I I think we might have. I think I might have said something about the tire maybe being CGI or something. But you've got to really look hard to tell, but it's interesting that you have to look really hard to tell. The effects are so, really well integrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's incorporated so well. Um, is Adam Warlock the first MCU autistic superpowered person? Hi, Rags. Hi. Uh, I don't think he's autistic. I think he's just uh, new. I think whatever he is is not um, like common in any way, shape, or form. He's, he's got a lot of things going on that we couldn't possibly know what's going on. Like, He's underdeveloped as an 
uh, uh, forged like new creature thing. Like, there's so much about him that's completely un un unrelated to human that I don't even know what to say he is. Um, because she said he was like hatched too early. It, I don't even know how his gestation would function. How does he does he come out an adult normally? Does he still need to learn and be taught things? I, I don't know. But uh, as as the high evolutionary said, there's there's stuff that's wrong with him. Don't know what it is. It's no wonder Nebula kept losing to her sister. She doesn't know how to dodge. Yeah, uh, that first attack from um, uh, Adam Warlock seems so telegraphed. I find it weird when they can't dodge stuff like that. Yeah, that kind of shit bothers me. Why are you making it to where these characters are not dodging obvious attacks? They should be good at this fighting thing. Mm-hmm. Also, I don't like that Nebula gets stuck with Mantis and Drax lost potential. Uh, um, I don't think I'd it's say not, that. It's... Yeah. I wonder what potential is lost, what idea you might have instead. Like I would, almost done, wanted perhaps. to... I'd want to scrap Counter-Earth and uh, Orgoscope and whatever adventure we put them on, that they're all together. And it's a decent chunk of one. Like, um, It's not that I don't think there's potential with Nebula, Mantis, and Drax. It's that I just want everyone together. Especially or we just spend, like, adventure. the vast majority of the movie on Counter-Earth, maybe, and we get to have all the, the people down there. Uh, first off, they're gonna not die horribly. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it'd be fun to kind of see them in their society. It's kind of like ours, but a little bit different. And by the way their society is structured, we sort of learn about how the High Evolutionary wants a society to be, which I think that could be interesting. Music recommendation for you fine folks. Johnny Manchild and the Poor Bastards, a jazz rock mix that I think Fringy and Rags in particular might really enjoy. Also, hi, Mauler. Hello. Hi. Um, so I'll, that out. I'll just pop it in the chat in case you guys want to know what it is. Um, uh, how about creating art, creating compelling art with being silly or joking and talking to people out of the moment entirely? Uh, this seems like a second half of something I'm not sure it's from. Hmm. Yeah, because I don't know what to do with that. Seems like an incomplete... Yeah, uh, if it's just on the topic of the tone, like I said, it's just, it's just really complicated sometimes to figure out whether something is or isn't appropriate. Mm-hmm. I think there was a time when people saw TFA in that opening with Kylo and Thingy, the the people were having fun with it, right? Like he was. Like, I'm Do sure you talk they were. first? Or do I yeah. talk first? And it's like, yeah. hey, hey. then like, um, hey, I mean, that's that's you know, like that's the humor, right? To balance out like a dire stakes or whatever that other comment said. So, it, well, that's, that's that's this is why it's, this is so tough we, because we it feels good, like right? any argument one could make to defend Adam Warlock could be used to defend any of the tone mismatching sort of stuff. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to sell it too short. I could be like, well, your criticisms sound like it could apply to most of the tonal mismatchy things in a lot of the, even the best well, movies. Well, I mean, people go for Ragnarok, right? That'll be the other one. Well, that, uh, Infinity War, and even Avengers 2012 are going to have moments if people were to rewatch it and mm -hmm. keep an eye on which ones. And it, like I said, I, I just don't think there is an easy way. This isn't like, does something make sense or not? It's like a binary. Most of the time, anyway. I'm, I'm talking about like the, the strict stuff, like... Yeah. I always go with like a gun and its amount of shots that it has left or something. Um, there's no like, oh, well, the, the, there's just more bullets this time or something. It's just like, don't really entertain that. But with tone, it can become so close. It's like, yeah, but that's in character. Or there's enough room here for that to be the case. Or, oh, it's serving another purpose. It does this. Or exactly. there's, there's so many it's, things to talk about that makes it complicated. Um, we're waiting for you in heaven, but now is not your time. Was cliche as fuck, but it still made me cry. Don't know how they did that, but it worked for me somehow. Five out of ten, but I adore the film. Hey, cliches aren't always bad. Sometimes it's nice to get, you know, kind of what you want. Yeah. Um, I think we have a lot of, I think a big issue with, you know, a lot of, a lot of movies is that they try to be really, ooh, look at me, aren't I special and complicated and complex? And I'm like, uh, yeah, but you're shit. And your ideas are terrible. So, uh, yeah. How many of the tonal issues in the film do you think are caused by editing slash reshoots slash producer mandates versus Gunn's original intention? Were there any reshoots at all? I don't think there were. As far as I know, we saw what Gunn wanted. And by yeah. the way, people asked him, is there going to be a director's cut for any of these films? And he said they are the director's cuts. So, yeah, make of that what you will. I think this is what he wanted to make. Yeah. 
I think so. Which is, yeah, <laughs> that's not, not, uh, not awesome. That's a shame. He's like, um, James Gunn, is, do we feel like we need to put him and Taika Waititi side by side in terms of, like, wild card or, like, maybe they'll do something um, good? Are they in the same bucket now? The thing with Taika Waititi is, uh, like, he's making it, his new movie is about, like, that, uh, it's it's something to do with, like, uh, football, like, um, like a, a comedy based on a real story about a guy trying to coach, like, like American Samoa football team, and I, I'm, I look at that. I'm like, I figure that'll be good and it'll be funny. Um, compared to like if he said Thor five, it's like, uh oh, fuck. Or like, you know, his Star Wars project. I just have more optimism for him when it's something that's not like mainstream, like big budget sort of like IP stuff. I think that's where I'm at with him. So with James Gunn, I'm not sure because that's what he does and that's what he's going to be doing like forever, <laughs> probably. You know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what to make of uh like what to expect for the future of uh like James Gunn's work. Um I think you can have humor in high tense situations. You can kind of have to find you kind of have to find a balance or else, as you guys point out, it can ruin the tone. Um I mean the the common sentiment these days is the Marvel doesn't like to hang on any particular emotion for too long. Yep. And uh I would say that Guardians Three is definitely gonna be one that could be categorized that way. Uh, except for a couple of so. scenes, like, when, you know... Even, like, Rocket um, almost screaming in agony over the loss of, like, Lila. Having um, the High Evolutionary mocking him soon after it, one could argue, is, like, uh, feels almost gross to look at or something. Yeah, but, if they, they did a really good job making us hate his guts. But yeah, I was gonna say, but that's kind of, like... One would argue, surely, that is a part of it. That's the point of it. That's that's the kind of yeah. feeling we're trying to you generate. You should be disgusted at someone doing that, yeah. He's an evil guess, villain. Uh, He's a bad guy. This might be sort of a way to... Uh, how, how to, like, in... I feel like Tarantino films are, like, a good example of, uh... How do, how do you balance, like, dramatic moments with comedy? Because he often does that. How does he make it work? Um, and I feel like it's almost worth pointing to the scenes where he doesn't do comedy. You know, for it to be, like, strictly dramatic and tense. As like a good contrast. I'm trying to think of like which example I would pick off the top of my head, but obviously the opening scene from Inglorious Bastards is like played totally seriously. We could go with the. Like uh, there's an interesting balance in the the pub um, scene because it's strictly tense for us, but there is there are jokes being funny, told between uh, them. Well, I, I'm sure everybody like there, there there will be moments in that scene where people laughed. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't seem to, like, undermine, uh, the drama that's, that's in that scene, you know? Yeah, like I said, this, there will be books to be written about strictly this topic. It's, uh, an yeah, incredibly it's, difficult it's thing really to nail. it's really complicated. It's super complicated. What yeah. were, um, this seems weird. I, I forget off the top of my head, what were Louise's last words in, uh, Resident Evil 4 remake? Because he feels like the kind of character who would go out with like a, a joke and oh, a damn. smile what or something like that. He did. He did. He did. I think he's. He was talking about like whether he he did okay, like whether he you know like not so bad. Oh, or yeah, something and you, like do you that. think a man can change sort of stuff? Yeah, because then because uh, then Leon like calls him Don Quixote. So yeah, there was something like that. I can't remember exactly what the line was. That was a good character i really like that guy yeah he was he, yep. yes he was a real one much improved uh the arrow joke was lame because it basically the same as iron man 2 with war machines missile um i mean I, that's i mean that, i feel like that same, one is better it's the same <laughs> joke uh but yeah. like i wouldn't say that's why a thing would be bad or good I don't think that the one was bad. Uh, I think because that one was about like the fact that um, that Justin Hammer's shit was just not as good as Tony's stuff. I think it was I like overhyped and and like. I, I, I know, think that scene doesn't work for me because of how fucking stupid it would be to fire that at him when he's two meters away from you. Uh oh! I mean, there's other aspects of it, yeah, that don't really because like he doesn't he he doesn't lower his um like uh face like yeah they both got work, all people you know? there have their face things down yeah. But then when Tony shoots him a little bit later, like one second later, then he he actually like gets ready for battle. It's like he knew that it wasn't going to yeah. work, you know? When he kind of didn't have any reason to think it wouldn't work. Unless he sabotaged it himself, which still I just don't. But, but I, they called it like Hammer. It, was, they, it seemed like the joke was, ah, yeah, because Justin Hammer makes shit. 
Yeah. Like that's that's what I thought. Not oh, he sabotaged it. Yeah, no, it's the same same. I was just. But you see, to... you see, that's the point. It's complicated, isn't it? You know, he's sorts of discussion. We can talk about, about it. Yeah. It's not just well. I thought it was funny. I thought it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, was, that's not much of a conversation, is it? Yeah, you would say that. Speaking of new blood, I'd love to get on local whose writing philosophy is interesting and worth discussing, and Schnee, whose analysis is consistently good, except the time you covered him. <laughs> okay. I don't believe you, because I've seen <laughs> some other thumbnails. But, um, yeah, I'd love to have them both on. We gotta pick, we gotta, I'd be happy to, yeah, maybe pick uh, some brains and stuff. I know we still got, there's a lot of great people out there, you know. Our problem is, we got a lot of people we know. We, we we have a lot of good uh we have a lot of good folks a lot of good friends of the channel. There are so many perpetual motion machines in the MCU. Oh, I haven't perpetual even thought motion about it. machines. Yeah, like, like they can keep themselves sense. going, sort of thing. What are we talking about here? Like as an example, because I'm aware of the concept, but like what? Well, what, so that's the thing we... they haven't given an example, and I'm trying to think like in all of the there probably is, but I've never thought about it. Just like. Machines that are operating uh, on energy that they could probably create themselves or whatever. I don't know. I, I considering all of the insane sci-fi tech, it wouldn't surprise me. Oh well, me. remember that. Um, wasn't a Stark Tower was self-sustaining? Yeah, but it was pulling energy from like the sun or geothermal energy, so it wasn't like a. Oh perpetual... uh, no! It wasn't wasn't a Stark Tower was uh that was his um his, the tech that he uses oh, for uh, the arc reactor yeah which is that like gets... a self sustaining fusion like energy source isn't it mostly self sustaining like it doesn't run for absolutely forever but yeah runs but for like a long close time. enough to it to where you might as well say well yeah. it's basically fusion energy right it's totally clean yeah it's like we ain't gonna run out of atoms and shit you know it's, <laughs> it's virtually free energy we gotta run out of atoms yeah. in the universe yeah we ain't gonna run out of atoms yeah it's virtually infinite yeah um yeah because that's part of the plot line that um Stock Tower is about to become a beacon of self-sustaining clean energy. It's why Loki chooses to open the portal above it, right? He's, um... It's how Didn't he, he wanted to open the portal above Stark Tower because of that ego shit, right? Yeah, uh, they, they talks about... A couple of characters talk about it midway through the film, and then uh, they realize that Loki, like, references it when he's talking to Nick Fury. What's been said about? Well, the yeah, because the, 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 uh, they've got that equipment right on Stark Tower. That was, that was, uh... That was like a no, but that was Tesseract related, wasn't it? Or am I? Yeah, the the line is uh, it burns you to come so close to have the Tesseract to have that power, unlimited power, and for what? A warm light for all mankind to share, which is uh, referring to Stark Tower. Yeah, of course. Um, or the cube, like it, yeah, but it's a just cube. Um, it's not. It, 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 there's a. It wasn't just thrown in for lulls. Like is what I guess I'm getting at. Even though I'm fine with the Iron Man's tech developing. That was one of the things with Iron Man three. I thought was a really cool development at first. Was the um the pieces of tech being remote controlled? Because I was always waiting yeah. for when he fully upgrades it to the point where it's in his blood. I was I was waiting for that. The oh, Jesus. The, it's That's it's it's a really cool blood fucking blood direction to take Iron Man. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, all the well, bots yeah. are stored in the blood, and the, they come out, and the, but eventually, it it becomes like an addiction, right? Iron Man, in his he fucking it. blood. Yeah, it's, it's like it's yeah, it's it's Luciferium. It's you, you take it, but then you made a deal with the devil here. Yeah, and I thought that they were kind of heading that direction because he has to inject pieces into him to get the remote controls working. And I was like, oh, this would be a good step toward it. And then Infinity War was like, we got nanotech, and I was like, all right. And then, uh, man, those suits—they just start to suck, huh? They did. They really did. And, and like they gone. started to look a lot worse too, just that lack of tangibility. I don't know what it was. Those those suits just look way worse than the original. They don't ones. look real. Like I know that a lot yeah. of the originals are CGI and stuff, but with this new ones, it's like I just don't I just don't They they, the, don't they see lack it. like tangibility of the original the original suits feel like um, you know, like a bunch of metal like plated together, welded together to like, you know, create this complete package. The new ones feel like so divorced from reality that it's kind of hard to like feel. Them yeah, as like, I can't believe this. Yeah, a little bit. It, whereas I can kind of believe the Iron Man suit, even though obviously, if, you know, it's yeah. not real tech. Europe. Sometimes when something look, you try to make something look too cool. I know it's fake, 
there's a kind yeah. of and honestly there's a, a little bit of a beauty in just pure utility it's that old like soviet firearm or like a, a post-apocalyptic machine where it's like it's clearly not trying to look cool but it almost does because of that it's so utility well, yeah, it's, it's believable like... and real there's uh the old Ratchet and Clank games had like a sort of retro futuristic aesthetic where a lot of it was like you know emphasizing that it's like you know metallic nature of a lot of these things the clunky kind of uh uh piece together like it, it's it, it's like you can see the seams right of the of the creation and that's kind of like that's cool in its own way. SCP of the day is SCP four hundred one a palm tree also high wags. Hi. This is a lower one, so I've read through it. SCP-401. Let's see. Do I remember this one? Um, it's rated highly. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Keep, uh, keep going. I'll give this a little read through and just... Uh... All right. Oh, it says uh, it, it resembles an ordinary tree in form and function. However, human physiology is substituted for plant biology in the fulfillment of necessary processes. The trunk is supported by uh, multiple vertebral columns woven together by tendons and muscle and coated by a layer of rough bone tissue also held together by flexible tendons. So it's like a flesh tree. That's what cool. it is. Um, let's see. Branches are suggested as human arms. And then there's a bunch of logs for experiments. There's probably some weird fucking experiments that they do. Yeah, I'll keep this open as a tab. A lot of the SCP stuff is like really cool and interesting um it's you know of course it's a well-known internet sort of you know meme and everything but a lot of those you know critters and ideas and phenomenon are legitimately quite interesting and they would make excellent short stories and movies sir logbong of mubschlington abai do a minions efap movies make a chat poll you coward also hi rax <laughs> riches for the good boy <laughs> hello we minions. will not be doing a minions efap I will happily watch all the Peter Pan stuff, but we are not going to be, uh, no, we're not going to be doing minions. Damn. Rare to get ranks to just outright say no to a minion, like to anything, really. It's just, I mean, I will say I'm, I'm not very I'm interested I'm just getting ahead of this one. Either. Yeah. Getting ahead of this one. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, Fringy and I are in agreement. I figured we might be, uh, but uh, we... This you know, doesn't interest me really at all. <laughs> I don't, I don't I've know got, I've got no be. passion for minions myself. Uh, I laughed my ass off when the animals from the cages were killed. Am I a bad person? Yes. Oh. You laughed at that. I mean... <laughs> this, uh, what was funny um, about it? Don't know. I don't understand that at all. Like, I don't, I don't know why in the world dude. you'd be laughing at that. This will likely be too late, but the tonal contrast you were looking for from M.O.M. was when Strange was talking to the Doctor from the first film at the beginning. Oh yeah, that was like a real a back and line. forth. Yeah, uh, But hey, I mean, it was talking about a pretty dire thing, right? So, I feel like I'll, I'll leave you alone. So no, I, no, I, I, it's, a, it's a fair what. point. There is no time where you can't apply that logic, and so it feels like there's just no way to, no way to really be definitive about any instance of tonal inconsistency other than pointing out Felt like it was booting me back and forth too fast. That's all. Um, hi, Rags. Hello. EFAP movies Pixar vs. DreamWorks arc? Dude, that sounds really long. It's We <laughs> have to pick, like... I don't even I don't know, know what that means as well. Like, Pixar versus DreamWorks, like it's a competition. Like, I'm not... The, I don't know. the only thing I can think of... Yeah, I don't know how we'd structure that or how we'd, like, make it. Well, um, I mean, we're talking, like... I think 30 films each at this point. Like, I, I feel like that's about as many films as they've made. Yeah. Like, that's that's like 60 movies we have to watch. Um, and I'm not really sure what the overarching objective would be there. Like, what the goal is. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't and, know. And I feel like for a lot of those films, it's just going to be... A lot of it will probably just be silent investment if we're talking like the older Pixar, yep. you know, output. Um, and some of the DreamWorks stuff as well. You know, like, if we're watching Wally, a lot of it would probably just be us silently appreciating it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Eve Happy's on my birthday. Happy me is happy. Also, a general oh, thanks for your huge contents over the years. No oh, problem. Glad you like. Hope you find it fun. Is the six-hour video the beer bad unbridled praise? 
know, but it'll be fun to show rags via bad someday. You remember that one, don't you, Fringy? Which one, sorry? Remember Bia Bad? I don't. It's the, I think, the only episode of Buffy that was made with a deal. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I think I do remember that now. Um, it's it's where the, the episode was meant to promote the idea that beer is bad. And I'm pretty sure they did not get the money, after all, because the episode did not achieve that goal, as far as they were concerned. I didn't get the money! <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to check on the facts on that, but I just remember finding it funny because Be About is notoriously known as like one of the worst Buffy episodes. Well, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it is up there with the fish one. The fish one's remember way one? worse as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that one sucks. <laughs> uh, hey, Mola, still waiting for a Hellboy review. Hi, Rags, Mola, Rags, huh? Oh, that's the, that's the emote, but yeah. Um... We have Hellboy. three Hellboy movies, right? The original There's Golden Army and then the recent one that they the made. Reboot. That's right. I'm, I'd be happy to do EFA movies for them, but I wasn't planning I on like, making that at all. videos for them or anything. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Hey, Mola and Fring Daddy G. Been watching past EFAPs with women. Also high rags. Hey, um, good. good for you. Uh, when talking about The Last of Us, Mola said that rags plus alcohol equals med kit. This is true IRL. If you give Rags alcohol, he sometimes becomes very wholesome. Um, I remember all of my search and rescue Eagle Scout training, and I can fix anything. And if I don't have anything to fix, then that's all right, too. Mm -hmm. um, the prime directive is shit in execution and morally. Um, it's something to talk about, that's for sure. In execution, I'd have to be more familiar with the... Um, with the episodes and everything, morally is morally is interesting. I don't um, know yeah, how I feel mean, about it. Morally. We'd have to have a it's... big fucking discussion about that. We'd have to start from the baseline, right? Like all the different ways this could ever be implemented and how it creates good things versus bad things, and then weigh those up. I, I, I already know what the with... argument against it would be, of course. <laughs> It's pretty easy to come up with some reasons why you would want to do it. And I think sometimes, like, essentially, um, I think one episode involved a species on a planet that was going to, like, die of this mega plague. And they had the ability to introduce a cure that would either, without letting the, you know, them know that Starfleet existed or with very minimal... You know, it's like a very very hush hush thing. They would be able to deliver like a vaccine or a cure to mm -hmm. save the civilization, and so that was a thing. Because um, the whole point of the prime directive is that you don't want to interfere in the development of civilizations, um, which is, you know, and then you weigh that up against, you know, the good that you do with you know your medicine and technology and things of that nature. Yes, uh, I think it was, gosh, like it was. I think in Mass Effect, the reason uh, Krogans, when they got nuclear weapons, they ended up destroying their own planet. Uh, uh, Chanka, well, I think the, like, the Krogan thing bits. was also the because uh, there was the genophage that was created by the Solarians. Like, yeah, I think this was before the population. Um, uh, they, it might have been, yeah. It but like been. when I'm they got that level of technology, they weren't like they're not a very progressive people. Uh, they and so they ended up like destroying their planet or a lot of it. Um, Kind of bringing it to ruin. Adam Warlock reminds me of Homelander. I mean, I guess a little uh, bit. He has that kind of face to mm. him. He has that, you know, a similar sort of facial structure. Big powerful dude who's recklessly using it, blah, 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 I guess. There's this stuff there. There's connections. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, Drax Jones, destroy the child, spike the ball. I saw some other people talking about how uh, they love the movie, but the, him throwing that ball at the kid just felt so wrong considering his love for children. Um, and I think that what you just... It's its less so him throwing it, it's more so him not doing much about it once it happens. Yeah, like, because look at him. He doesn't understand what's happened when he absolutely would. Yeah. Hi, Rex. Hello. You play Sea of Thieves, right? Do you always do a proper ship send-off at the end of each session? Yeah, we blow it up. We blow it up, and we watch it sink into the water while on fire, and we play our little jaunty tune before we Wait, log that, off. Are you meant to do that? 
Um, are you meant to? I guess you're not well, meant I'm, to. Is but... that what people do? They blow up their ships. Um, before you log off, yeah. So when you log in, uh, every player you essentially get. It's not like the ship itself that's of value. So when you log in, you get a ship, and you can choose between a sloop for one to two players, a ah, what? There's a middle one. And then there's a galleon, and it essentially, depending on how many players you have in your group, up to four, I think, you can choose a certain size of ship, and they'll have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, so at the end, the, the, the progression essentially comes from using the ship to get a bunch of treasure, bring it back, fight other players, and that sort of thing. So you bring, you go out, you do all your adventures, you get your, you know, hopefully you get all your treasure and everything, you put it on the ship, then you bring it back to a harbor. And then you take all that stuff and you sell your, your booty to get a bunch of money. Um, but the ship itself is, you know, it doesn't really, like, cost you stuff. You, you always, you need a ship to play the game, essentially. So the game will give you a ship. Uh, okay. So at the end, before everyone logs off for the night or whatever, they take the ship and they put explosive barrels and they light it on fire and they, they blow it up. And then it sinks into the water and... and you you sit on the you know the little dock and you watch it go down and you maybe play some music, uh, and it's and it's a thing you know it's a thing. Okay, right. Uh, some of the characters in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies have more development than others, but they all have their own stories. It's not his story; it's their story. I'd be much more fine with with that kind of point being made. Um. That's why we were talking about it. It just, it just felt weird saying it's his story. Mm. Yeah, that is strange. Especially and, um, when, in terms of, you know, if you had to pick a main character in the first two films, it's Peter. I think it would be even weirder if it was actually her saying it rather than his, like, consciousness mixed with his memories or something. But then right. it's like, what is that? It's like Rocket telling himself to that it's his story. I, I, don't, I don't really understand it. Mm. Lord Longbong of Mursington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong Fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'd be a movie fap mm. for the ages. P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Scritch is for the good boy. Hi. Uh, yeah, that'd be an interesting one to do. Mm. I wouldn't mind watching that again. A it's Long a Kong it. it would be. Very uh, be cool to check out how it stacks up. You Dumbo's ought to play DDLC too. Perhaps hmm. someday. Maybe. Y'all ever seen Generation Kill? No, no I've not. Uh, uh, neither have I, so, yep. No, I haven't seen it. Nope. Loved when Star Lord says, Come on, Gamora, baby, come back. You're the crispy to my critters. Apparently, that was their favorite part. Wow. It is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Yeah, I love it. Hello, EFAP crew and guests. Curious to hear your thoughts on The Hunt for Red October. Highly recommended if you haven't seen it. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. I have not seen that movie. I have. I, I thought it was that. neat. Um, I don't think I like it as much as its reputation, but it's still pretty good, or at least I thought it was pretty good. Um, but it's been a while, so I don't really have anything else to say. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sad none of y'all have seen Deadwood. Incredible character writing and depth with the most unique, engaging dialogue. There's really nothing like it. I'll do one better. I've been to Deadwood. <gasps> but you haven't seen it? to that place. I have seen Deadwood, the town. I saw the graves of Calamity Jane and Wild Bill uh, Hickok and uh, the, the place where he was shot. It, it's, all, it's all there. It's a really cool, like, Old West kind of town. Super, uh, super, super awesome. I highly recommend it. I sometimes lament the fact that the National Socialists gave perfect clumps of biological matter a bad name. From Bob Dolph Chipler's book, My Struggle <laughs> with Super Dolph Mario 3. Chipler. Bob Dolph Chipler. <laughs> uh, you, you guys have been a huge help with my writing for my TTRPG. Thanks for all you do, and God bless. Hopefully one day you'll be able to play it. Hey, maybe. I need to get mm. me into some uh, games here. It's been a while since I've played, but uh, really happy to know that uh, that it's helped. I know if I ever, because it's like a long-term goal for me to start sort of DMing those kinds of games, and I already know that setting up a bunch of stuff, a lot of that will be helped by, you know, EFAP and watching movies. 
Wild raccoons live up to three years. A domesticated one can live up to 20. Rocket is genetically and cybernetically augmented. Who knows how long you'll live? Seriously, if it was up to James Gunn to the point where if James Gunn said he can live to 200 or something, he'd be like, all right. Yeah, you've got a you've got a pretty much a blank check on uh, on that. They didn't have their technology. He was down. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, no. ODST is the best Halo game. I will never super chat again. All right. Well, <laughs> you know what? That's a fine yeah. one and only super chat. Because ODST, ODST was really neat. neat. Yeah. Yeah, really like it. Mahler thinks that ODST is really neat because it's the only one he's played, right? No. I thought it was the only one you played. <laughs> Fucking idiot weirdo. I played Reach with you. We never played... No, you no, not Reach, the else. Infinity. Which we have a fucking... What, I don't know Infinite. the names of the Halo games. Halo Infinite. Well, I doesn't um, know what he's done in his life. But I've so told you countless around. times that I used to play Halo 3 alongside Gears 2 and Mom yeah, Warfare all the yes, time. Okay, I got you. Alright, I got you. <laughs> As an American, I'd like to say congrats on the new Monarch. I watched a bit of the ceremony and it's very silly, lol. All right. <laughs> are you are you like really invested in that more? <laughs> it could give less of a fuck. I know about it as much as probably the next American. I just I just don't care about the monarchy at all. Yeah, uh, we threw a lot of tea in the ocean, so we didn't have to give a shit about the coronation. Well, at least the the sea creatures are happy. Getting some That's tea. right. Well, and you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad the old man's you know getting a special moment. Or he gets to be up there with his scepter mm. and his in his orb. Cast some I saw spells. his orb. Oh, man, I just I don't yeah, cast some spells. <laughs> you know, good good for him. Thing is, people in Australia care about that for some reason. Uh, he used to be well, yeah, lady. and you'll you know talk to the right people here, and they're like they live for it. That's like the, the all the meaning of their life, and it's like all right. I I yeah, I just I don't care. <laughs> Uh, hi, Efap. I found you through your Arcane videos back when I was looking for more content on what had become my favorite show. Thanks for the content. Oh, you bet. Hey, really glad cool. that you uh, found us that way. That was, uh, that was a hell of a good show. Yeah, yeah. Those, and that was three Efaps for three episodes each, right? I think that's how we did it. Or yes. was, it was it 342 like or 333? It was, it was... I can't remember exactly the order, but it was three. Yeah, three episodes. It was a lot. <laughs> it might have been 324. Well, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, that might have been. It was a lot of things to talk about, and hopefully season two will give us the same passion to talk about it. I uh, I can't imagine they won't. I, I I would have thought they'd think like, oh, we need to do the same process to get you know good results. No, oh, no Russian, that sort of thing. Oh, that'll be nice and stressful too. It will be very <laughs> stressful. Good. Uh, are you guys going to cover across the Spider Verse? Maybe depends on how it is. If it comes out, and, depends. Yeah. yeah, it'll have to be. We'll, we'll to probably say. see it and then be able to figure it out from there. Yeah, uh, so we'll put a maybe on that one. Back when I was still watching Nostalgia Critic, I saw his L.A. Lion King review and found his conclusion curious. Basically, that while the film was bad, it made a lot of money, which Favreau could use to make more Mandalorian. Oh my god! Jeez. Wait. Sorry. Wait. What? <laughs> So, you said it? so the nostalgia critics' argument for why the live-action Lion King is good is because it made a lot of money, which Favreau can use to make Mandalorian. Jeez, where do you <laughs> even begin with an argument like that? <laughs> I mean, first off, we got to begin by saying the Mandalorian sucks balls, so we're gonna have to start. There, I don't even know. What, I don't even, the Lion King made a lot of money, so therefore the Mandalorian will get more money. Like it's part no of no clue on that one. That's uh... no. It'll mean that all of the other Disney live action sequels or live action remakes. Yeah, if exist. anything, it would. Yeah, exactly. It would boost them. It just yeah. fuels their existence. Um, pretending, of course, that you guys think that Mando is good, what do you think of the spirit of Doug's conclusion? Retarded. Retarded. I just, I, I don't even understand the through line there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would love to listen to a weekly show from Fringy consisting entirely of him referencing Simpsons moments and laughing. Uh, I mean, it, it would be a difficult well to exhaust because it would, uh, there's a lot of episodes. And there's like a cool down so, on any one joke of about maybe two weeks and then it can be referenced again. Yeah, and then it's funny again. <laughs> yeah. Fast X should be Fast 10, your seat belts. <laughs> your seat belts. Nice. I like that. That's, That's good. A good fucking meme, That's a dude. good joke. <laughs> they should have called it that. 
<laughs> That's a good meme. <laughs> and uh, it's, there's two more, right? So this new one's coming out soon. I'm hoping we can organize it so that we can do a Fast and Furious arc that by the time it reaches the 10th one, the 11th will come out, and we can cover that maybe in like an EFAB episode or something. Because what, what an insane franchise. And uh, just even the trailer, because I saw it... Um, uh, in the cinema when I was watching, uh, uh, I, also, I saw Dungeons and Dragons in the theater, by the way, through complete strange chance. But the trailer for Fast 10 was there, and uh, me and uh, my sister were just fucking laughing. Like, and I don't know that that's the goal, but that's that's almost better, you know? I can't, uh, there's so many lines in there, you know? It's just like, when your yeah, family I... is family <laughs> And then Jason Momoa's like, well, if everyone's your family, who are you going to save? Or something. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what? So, yeah, I think that'll be fun to do. Uh, Wings quote of the day. Shout out to my fellow finger sniffers. And that boy Wings of Redemption's chair for holding it down. Finger sniffers? Hey, man. <laughs> Have some respect. He's going to be boxing <laughs> soon. Uh, Gun says Rocket is the character he sees himself in, so I have a theory that Rocket leading a new team of Guardians is intended to almost be a meta parallel to James Gunn now going from leading Guardians to leading the DCU. Hmm. Um, yeah, go cool. Maybe. Maybe. Not unfair, yeah. There's a connection there. Um, I have to admit, though, it was a plot hole he didn't use his rocket boots. The scene-for-scene -scene shot of Star-Lord dying in space like Leia was pretty funny in a meta sense. I don't even, I can't even say, like, was it supposed to be funny? It's like, I think it might have been. Like, when his face does the floompiness and then Adam saves I, him. Uh, Do you remember how their faces look in the first one when they're dying? Yeah, they're like frosted. It's much more, you can tell it's taken much more seriously. Yep. Uh, but, Cosmo is a good dog, but Rags is the best dog. Oh, thank you. Disney uses a process called plussing with all the scripts. This boils down to noting every film to death and with make X funnier slash more overt for max appeal. Well, yeah, that sucks. And uh, it's a challenge for any writer. Doctor Strange writer Robert Cargill implied this is why Edgar Wright walked in a double toasted interview. I think the movie was an FU. Oh, um... Well, yeah, that's like a commonly understood story. Edgar Wright could have been a big part of the MCU, but he wanted to have more control. And they said no. And that's probably something they'd regret. Uh, uh I, I mean, I, I guess now they probably would, but for a long time they probably thought, "Nah, we're okay." I think. Well, yeah, then, especially knowing how. Quantum Media by then, it's like, but no, who's to say that Edgar Wright would have made more than one Ant Man film? You just, like, knowing how it's ended up, at this point I'd be like, fuck it, let's just give full control to all of these individuals in phase, like, three. Let them branch yeah. out and go nuts. And let them talk to each other. Oh, yeah. So they can figure out what the overarching plan should be. I install AT, uh, ADT for a living, and based on this movie I can start telling my customers that their homes are better protected than Orgocorp. Laugh my ass off. I would fucking yeah, hope so. Yeah, Orgacorp didn't do a great job at securing their incredibly important uh, research facility. They could have nope. they could have worked a little harder. They were like, "Ah, oh, we got three shields. We got Nathan Fillion. We'll be fine." <laughs> hey, was watching EFAP ten and noticed you said you plan to revamp thumbnails and stream visuals for EFAP once you finish the TFA series. Is that still the plan? Can't wait, Kappa. Well, it all got revamped. TFA's not quite done yet. You see, they they flipped. Scheduling or something. Um, yeah, that was back when EFAP had like updates every every other episode almost in terms of just how it looked and things were going on. Once upon a time, the thumbnails were literally just a screenshot of who was in the call, the Discord, and that was it. Uh, speaking as a teacher, ten year olds swear a lot. Well, this is why I find Not it when amusing. I was growing up. Huh? Go ahead. Well, when I was really. Yeah, really. When. Growing up, you did not swear. You did. I don't know. South Park, <laughs> South Park was absolutely like I, Trey Parker and Matt Stone have talked about that. The reason why the kids swear in South Park is because they remember how they were like when they were, you know, ten. And yeah, they we were we were That's swearing like enough. crazy even in uh, 
primary or the equivalent especially by school. that time because that's when you're starting to think oh yeah i'm so cool you know <laughs> so the big this. thing uh, the crazy part for me was uh my parents found out through 360 because i would i would get so immersed i forget that i can be heard and so they'd be like gee you swear a lot and i was like uh Okay. <laughs> like this, I mean, uh, I guess it's on the, the subject, because I think it was something to do with, like, that you wouldn't take, like, that you would otherwise take your kid to see Guardians 3, except when you found out that there was one swear word. Like, I find that strange, especially considering how much death there is in that film. Yeah, and just like, that would terrifying be... Yeah, that's my primary concern with that. It's like, that is not the thing to stop your kids from It just seeing. seems like a strange... Like that, oh yeah, all of this crazy death and violence, cool, but like one swear word that, the, you know, I don't know. But hey, I mean, that's why it's PG-13, right? Parental guidance, that's uh, that's yep. your call to make. And then, culturally speaking, some parents don't want their kids to see a swear word until they're 18. Some kids, uh, parents are like, it'll be fine. Until they're 18. I'm kind of memeing. <laughs> Not to say. Uh... I feel like there's no avoiding it by that point. What makes it so much better is we rarely see characters react to death in an appropriate way or to a degree in the MCU. I'd scream if my friend was shot. I'm, I'm inclined to agree with that. That was it was a yep. really, really strong like reaction, and it's about time the MCU had something serious happen. Actually, happening. treated death seriously, and the people's reactions to death are going to be dramatic. Yep. Rocket's reaction to Lila's death made me cry. Yeah, it's yeah. harrowing. Mm-hmm. I found my mojo. It's a six month long. Oh, it's six months long? I think they're talking about uh, the re membership thing. Groovy, baby. Mola unbanned metal. Hashtag free the mootle. Mel's banned? He's banned? <laughs> <It's> news <laughs> to me. What did he do? Uh, they flanderized Drax in universe with mind fleams. Yeah, who knows? Who knows how much he's been deleting between scenes, man? Who knows? Yeah, that's, uh, it's haunting. What do you prefer, The Last Crusade or Raiders of the Lost Ark? Last Crusade. Last Crusade. Yeah. But I mean, it will soon, of course, be the Dial of <laughs> Destiny. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, that will be the best oh, one. Oh dear, when, when is that coming out? Is that soon? That's, uh, I think that's June, I think, sometime in yeah. June. We're entering that time of year. I saw a trailer for it da, 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 on, for this damn movie. Oh, that's the other trailer that I saw, yeah, it was for mm -hmm. Indiana Jones. That was the other well, one. At least it's an excuse for me to rewatch the trilogy again, because I probably will. But I'll have to. They I'm actually going to. They use that gonna... fucking song. Of course they do. Remember that song that was in those films that we didn't create? It's it's expected as fuck. All the films have it. Of course they have it. Well, I, just... I mean, we saw it right once we got to Obi Wan Kenobi of like actually using Jewel of the Fates, because it's like, yep, that's where we're at at this point. No, no. I meant the uh, Please Allow Me to Introduce Myself song. Oh. They had that in the trailer, and then they like re they mixed it into Wait, the Indiana you, Jones thing. What? I, I, I don't the remember Indiana, this. <laughs> in the I Dial of Destiny remember. trailer that I saw before Guardians 3. Matt, I, I don't remember this at all, actually. That doesn't sound familiar. I'm trying because Sympathy for the Devil, I remember talking to. Sympathy for the Devil, that's it. As and Gary about that song. I can't remember if that was because of Dial of Destiny trailer, was it? It might have been. I I just generally might have been. It was getting all melty. Oh, 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 yeah, right. Okay, yeah. Now it's now it's starting to come back. <laughs> yeah, now I remember. I think I was mixed up with a totally different song. Uh, hey y'all. Speaking of Guardians, you should check out the Guardians of the Galaxy video game. It's a pretty good, rat, and I enjoyed playing it. P.S. Hello, Rags, and hi, Frangy. Hi. Uh, I actually played that for a little bit, and I kind of didn't enjoy playing it. Um, like I. I Super Maybe generic, I, or uh, I don't know what it was, but like the get the the combat was not like gelling for me at all, really. Um, so that was kind of a struggle, especially since it is a video game. <laughs> like if I wasn't having that much fun actually playing it, but maybe that's a game. I always hear good things about it. Um, yeah, but I, you know, I only I only put a few hours into it, so it might be that I need more time. But I feel like I put in like a good like three hours or something at least. Um, or at least the opening section I got through, and yeah, it just wasn't wasn't gelling for me. At last, by how harnessing the sheer power of autism that flows through my giblets, I have managed to catch up from episode one all the way to now. Don bless you, dirty Ewok words. Wow, that's legitimately extremely impressive. Good God, you're a madman. 
Well, I hope you had fun. <laughs> That's I an adventure. So. Dear God, I hope you had fun. Thoughts on Fly from Breaking Bad, also High Rags. Hello. Uh, it's a controversial episode. It's often picked as the worst one, and then it's responded to by video essays saying it's actually the best episode of all time because it's the most meaningful or something. Um, I tend to like bottle episodes if they're handled well. Um, that's kind of what that is. When you say a bottle episode, that's like a self-contained episode. Bottle episode right? basically means like one location sort of fixed set of characters. Oh, okay. Like a ship um, in a bottle. Well, so if you imagine, I don't know, like if it, if it was like a Star Trek episode, it would be one that's entirely on the Enterprise or something. Like they don't go to a planet, they're just all, they're all on the Enterprise and it's like a very focused, usually small stakes kind of story. Locked okay. in a room, trapped in some kind of location. It's just wall to wall. What was it? What did Abed say? Wall to wall emotional nuance. <laughs> like, yeah, because he, he, he hates ball episodes, water, right? Which is, yeah, I don't know why he would, but, you know. Well, to be fair, do you I remember guess, like, when um, I, he presents his script to Hickey in season five and it's like awful? I actually can't remember that, but I, I it, it kind of rings a bell. I mean, like, it, it, right, Hickey's like, reading it, it and he's like, my name is Justice, Police Justice, and I'm gonna be a detective who's gonna solve some crimes, and Hickey's like, yeah, I think I can help you with this. <laughs> well, I, cause, um, Abed, uh, you remember when he got shown, like, uh, that, it was like Doctor Space Time or something, it was yeah. like a Doctor Who thing, and then it, and then, like, it ends... Uh, and it's only six episodes long, and it like yeah, comes it's to British. an end, and that causes him to have to have a breakdown because <laughs> he can't handle the idea of a show coming to an end. He's a more extreme version of all of us. Yeah, kind of. Uh, but yeah. Uh, well, what do you think about the fly episode from Breaking Bad? Ah, uh, damn. I uh, I I kind of don't remember that one very well. It's when they were in the. You know the cooking. No, stuff. I I know I know what I know that, but like the problem is that I I actually like don't remember it all that well in terms of what was a happening lot of in it other than because like, like Walt, Walt I think getting really fucking mad. Well, he gets really mad, life. but then he stays up for a long time, I think, and he starts getting a bit delirious, especially because they're using something to try and kill the fly. That's like they you know it's in yeah. an enclosed space, so it starts to fuck with him, and then he comes close to saying something about uh, Jane. Uh, the, the thing is, is uh, I mean, I like, I'm pretty sure that if I rewatched it, that I would come away like enjoying it because I remember enjoying. I remember it. thinking it's good. the ma The main reason people are interested by it, of course, is because it's Ryan Johnson that made it, uh, or at uh, least directed that one. Well, sure, but like, I thought, like, I don't know, Ozzy Mandis, like, that's that's like some top tier. Just don't give him, don't let him write. <laughs> like, that's that's it. Yep, <laughs> don't let him write. I'm concerned too. It felt really weird that Quill decided to leave, especially after all the effort he put in to save Rocket. He didn't leave, he's just popping over to Earth. I don't understand. I'm very confused. Yeah. Why are we treating this like he's fucking gone to a different universe? He's not. He's just over there. Uh-huh. It's never made any sense to me, because, like, you, you could be like, yeah, but he's not He's not going to be an active Guardian anymore. Like, in it's the like same why? Room. He could like, be a Guardian. Call. If Rocket was to call him right now and he said, fucking Galactus is here and he's doing things like, Quill, will you help us? He's like, no, I'm sorry, Rocket, I'm not a Guardian anymore. I'm on the lawn. Don't make any feckin' sense at all. Sense at all. Also, Cap, you talked about it on the Forge. I agree with you saying Drax earned the dad payoff, but is it weird that Nebula said it? Hmm. Is it weird that Nebula was, like, the one to recognize it? Because she says, him? Drax, you're not a destroyer, you're a dad. Like, should not should Nebula be the one to say it? And should it be said at all? I'm not even sure it should be said. Or, yeah, or, like, later he says his name, but he doesn't say destroyer, he says something else. I don't um, I just, why not just have him even, with the kids? Just do it? Yeah. I don't know. If we gotta say it, I was thinking, and those lines, mm. if you gotta have to say it, this would be better. <laughs> I guess so. I don't fucking know. I don't know either. Don't you fucking do it. Hello all. Nice to catch you live. Oh, that's it. All right. Well, Oh, yeah. all right. Hey, what's up? Hello there. Ouch. I kind of feel bad for enjoying it. I knew I couldn't hold a candle to one and two, but I didn't expect y'all to give it a three out of ten. And they got a crying face. Oh, don't feel bad for enjoying it because there are, like, I don't hate it. There's plenty to enjoy. I, uh, it's... Yeah, there's legitimately a lot to enjoy. That's what makes it so painful that it's bad in a way. 
Yeah, and a lot of the stuff that we picked at, um, I can say with confidence, at least for myself, these are things that I didn't even notice at first. Um, yeah, a lot of these things I did not notice. Everything happened so fast with the counter planet like exit stuff that I, I was unable to properly think about where everyone was and what everyone was thinking. I was like, "This is the, we're here now. This is happening. These are these people are here. These people are uh, okay." Um, but then when you slow it down, you're like, "Holy fuck! How did that even happen?" I don't get how it happens because he would have wrote it all. You know, would have wrote it as slowly as we would have been reading the the notes to break it down. I just I don't I don't get how he made those mistakes, but um, hey man, you know I I don't think we could have highlighted those like five hundred mistakes in the film and then been like, hey, this is a great seven out of ten. You know, it wouldn't make any sense at all. Uh, I almost wonder if James Gunn wasn't trying as hard with this one because he was bitter about being fired, combined with his excitement for running the new DCEU. Sometimes I wonder if we should just stop trying to find some grander reason and just be like. Maybe they just did a bad job. Yeah, he just fucked it up. Um, he just, wrote it, he thought it was solid, good. and he missed some stuff, and, you know, he's just like, oh shit, yeah, I guess that is that way. Damn. There doesn't have to be some explanation beyond that. I'm, I'm fine with the idea that not everybody... Because I even... This happens in the reverse when people are like, wait, this person made something good, but we've always known them to be bad. Do you think someone else made it, or somebody wrote it? It's like, could be, they just, they just made something good this time. That could be it. And vice versa. Um... I'm not sure where my position on James Gunn as a creator comes to now. Like, if someone said, like, the new James Gunn written and directed movie is out, what do you expect? I'd be like, ooh. I have no idea what I expect. Don't know, yeah. It's gotten a bit weird in that department. In any case, that's the last one. So, uh, oh, wow. All right, neat. Thank you yeah, all fair. for sending in your messages. I appreciate it. Uh, I guess... We shall see you next time, wherever that may end up being. Yeah, we'll see everyone later. Thanks Bye. for the super chats. Toodaloo.